Hi everybody, this is your weekly horoscope for Monday the 25th of September going through until Sunday the 1st of October. It's really nice to be with you, thank you for joining me. And my horoscopes are based on UK time. I'm going to give you a day-by-day -day rundown of what this week looks like. And the key theme that I kind of found in this week is that you're going to have a strong desire to make changes and to start new things this week. But because Saturn is in Sagittarius and it is quite involved in everything this week, it makes it difficult to discern what the right path is. So if you find yourself instantly rushing off and doing things and just being in ego mode and saying, I have to have this now, I need this, no question about it, I don't care what's going on, I don't care about the warnings, I'm just going to go for it. That's kind of a red flag. It's much better to kind of plan ahead and to take your time with things this week. So on Monday the 25th of September, we have the moon going into Sagittarius at 2 minutes past 4 in the morning. The moon is what makes you feel at ease. The moon then sextiles the sun in Libra. Happy birthday to all you Libras out there. And Mercury, the communication planet, is ecstatic being in the sign of Virgo, and that squares Saturn in Sagittarius. So on Monday, you start the week with a real sense of enthusiasm and energy. Relationships work well, they're not going to cause you major problems. You're charming, you're eloquent, other people will respond to you in kind. But with Mercury and Saturn connecting, you'll still have this sense of uncertainty and you may hesitate when it comes to making decisions, which is okay because things are still a little bit foggy and you don't know exactly which way to go. So Monday is good because you innately understand that caution is required and that you can't just rush off and do as you like and forget about the consequences and be inconsiderate. You naturally have that caution built in. So Monday is going to be a great day for you. On Tuesday the 26th of September we have the Sagittarius moon conjuncting Saturn in Sagittarius. So both of these are in Sagittarius now. The moon gives you that sense of ease and comfort in Sagittarius and sitting next to Saturn. You feel quite comfortable within the fog. The sense of not knowing becomes less of a problem and you're able to kind of ease your way into it and relax your way into it. Saturn in Sagittarius is there, but the moon also squares Mercury in Virgo. Mercury rules Virgo and it's all about receiving information and making sense of it. So you see where the conflict is. Saturn is creating all this emotional and intellectual fog. Whereas Mercury in Virgo is making you laser sharp and is giving you understanding. So on Tuesday, you're going to have a really strong desire to move forward and to try something new and exciting. But make sure you don't rush into anything that could be harmful to you or others. So if you have to go out and do something thrilling and wonderful and exciting on this day, then just make sure you think about other people and yourself and whether this could end in tears or not. And if it's all good, then go for it and have a wonderful day. On Wednesday, the 27th of September, the moon now moves into Capricorn at 425 in the afternoon. Now the moon in Capricorn is very much um, more grounded. It's focused on being responsible, diligent, um, Capricorn is a wonderful, wonderful sign because Capricorns don't believe that they're entitled to good things just because they exist. Capricorns believe that if they want to get to the top, if they want something in life, that they have to work for it. Capricorn can also be very stoic when it comes to emotions and they can go on despite fear. They can move on despite obstacles in their life because they have great faith in themselves. Capricorns are wonderful people to have around you, especially in a crisis because they keep a cool head, they're loyal, and they're practical. Jupiter, the lucky planet, is in Libra, the sign of connections with other people, and it opposes Uranus in Aries. Uranus is the planet of rebellion and I want things my way and I've got energy, especially in Aries, which is the ram, which says my way or the highway. So Wednesday, with this recipe of Jupiter and Uranus and the moon, 
Wednesday is a great day to use your communicative abilities, eloquence and charm to improve your relationships. And that's all relationships. That's family relationships, relationships with colleagues, with your boss, with your partner, with your loved ones, everyone. Moving on to Thursday, the 28th of September, we have the first quarter moon in Capricorn. Now, the moon, when it's a new moon, it's totally black and it's recharging its batteries. And once that's over, the moon moves on and moves towards being a full moon again. And this first quarter is really the halfway point between the new moon and the full moon. So the moon is building up its energy. It's becoming bigger and brighter and brighter and brighter. It's not just a crescent anymore. It's now half a moon and it's getting brighter. So the pace picks up. It's in Capricorn that gives you more energy to work. It gives you more energy to work at the things that you want in your life. And you naturally feel like you can do that. Also, the outer planet Pluto, the planet of transformation, rebirth, the phoenix rising from the ashes goes direct. And Pluto has been in retrograde for a long time. The retrogrades with the outer planets aren't really as significant as with personal planets because obviously they're personal planets and they affect us personally. The outer planets have a much more um, global effect. It's much more about humanity as a whole. So with Pluto going direct, the things that you were thinking of changing, now that it's going direct, you'll actually want to make those changes. So on Thursday with the moon in Capricorn, first of all, it's going to up the pace, like I said, your desire to work at something you care about increases. The changes you've been contemplating will actually, you will start to put those into practice, but they will also start to happen in your life by themselves in a way. Because you've thought about them, because you've manifested those changes, there will be opportunities from this day to make changes to your life. So whether that's in work or where, where you live or your circle of friends, changes will naturally now come more easily to you. So you'll naturally be guided to make the world, the external world, more compatible with what you feel on the inside and um, making it less incongruous in the sense that, you know, inside I feel like an artist and this very sensitive person, but in the real wor world I work as a construction worker with my hands and everything is concrete and I have to lift heavy weights. That doesn't work and that person who's in that situation is going to have to make a change because you can't change yourself as such. If you're an idealist and a romantic and you like information, then instead of working really hard to change yourself into a builder or someone who works with concrete, why not change the job into something that uh, uses your natural gifts and talents? That makes much more sense. So with Pluto going direct now here on the Thursday, you'll be able to make these changes much more easily. On Friday, the 29th of September, we have Venus in Virgo, which isn't a good placement. Venus is the planet of love and beauty. And in Virgo, she just likes to analyze things and to be analytical and to, to criticize and to say, this is good, this is not bad. Venus kind of falls when it's in Virgo because it's at its least loving that it can be. That planet opposes Neptune in Pisces, and that only happens once a year. So this is Venus Day. Mercury also moves into Libra. Mercury is the communication planet, and when it moves into Libra, it becomes much more people-oriented. When it's in Virgo, it's about, let's make things accurate, let's make things clear, let's make things concise. In Libra, it's about connecting and communicating with other people. Small talk is gonna be easier and more fun and uh, just connecting on a surface level and enjoying yourself, going to a dinner party, going to a baby shower, going to a social event, just feels more relaxed and easy. So Venus Day is important because it does only happen once a year. This opposition of Venus and Neptune makes you an absolute idealist, okay? It brings out all those idealistic notions that you have within you, even if you're normally very rational or very 
kind of um, a guardian, you protect the status quo. You will become idealistic today and romantic. So you're only going to see the positive and loving things in other people. You'll see, you'll see the best in other people on this day. But don't commit to anything long term. Don't commit to anything that you'll regret later on once Venus, those rose tinted spectacles have come off and you're back to seeing things as they really are. So on Friday, the 29th of this September, you're biased in a sense because you only see the good in people and that's wonderful. So, you know, this is a great day to be of service, to do charity work, to help others, to be selfless because you genuinely do see the good in other people and you will want to help. On Saturday, the 30th of September, the moon goes into Aquarius at 4.41 in the morning. Now, the moon in Aquarius is really comfortable thinking about these very abstract concepts and uh, thinking scientifically, thinking about education, thinking about the state of the world, thinking about justice, the law, what's right, what's not right, and what can be done for humanity. So your focus immediately becomes much more... Um, external you start focusing on the world much more and less about your own needs your own desires the aquarius moon also trines mercury in libra and the sun in libra so saturday is the best day of the week for relationships again any kind of relationships because with um, mercury in libra you're very personable you're very likable and the sun in libra your identity even if you're gen generally a loner, you're someone who keeps to themselves, with the sun in Libra, you feel a desire, an easier connection with other people. So it's a great time to meet new people. It is the best day of the week for relationships. You can improve existing relationships. You can start new ones. You can find a suitable partner. You can go on a date or you can simply have fun with friends, family and loved ones. So Saturday should be a day that you block off your schedule and you really spend time with other people and you enjoy yourself, you deserve it. On Sunday the 1st of October, we're in October already, the Aquarius moon quincuxes Venus in Virgo. So it forms a very tentative relationship. A quincux is when two planets are, I think it's 135 degrees away from each other, so it's tentative. And Mars in Virgo trines Pluto in Capricorn. So on Sunday with this mix, you're going to get a divine message from the universe and you're going to get that via another human being, via another person talking to you or expressing something to you. And that's a message from the, the creator, the divine, the universe, and it's something that you need to know. You know, um, I always, I once asked, um, when I was a teenager or something, I asked these people, how do you know what God's will is for you? How do you know what God wants? And they say, well, by reading the Bible. Uh, and I thought, well, the Bible isn't really very uh, relevant to me because according to the Bible, um, I'm in trouble. So that didn't work for me. And uh, th through continuing to look, I realized that I can find out God's will for me, not by re reading the Bible, but by connecting with God and having a personal experience of God and trying to decipher what he wants me to do. And usually it's very quiet. And sometimes I find myself magically doing things that I never even considered. And that's when you have a relationship with the universe, the higher power. And that's when these actions just organically come out of you. So the message will come via another person today. Unlikely that it comes through your meditation technique unless you get a visitation from one of the ascended masters and you have a vision that could certainly happen. But it's more likely that someone else says something in passing that then goes ding in your head and a light bulb goes on and it's like, okay, I understand. The information is spot on and trustworthy. You can implement it. You can make changes based on that information and those changes are going to benefit you. 
So for example, someone sets you up on a date or someone offers you an investment opportunity on this day. If that, those kind of things come along, do it. It's a really good opportunity to work with others, to um, take the information and the opportunity that comes in via other people, to embrace it, to grab hold of it and to um, go for it, to, to start a partnership or to, to go on that date or to um, listen to the advice and to implement it. So it looks like a very changeable week. It looks like there's a lot, lot going on. We're certainly not going to be bored in this week. If you'd like a private reading with me, then please visit my website. It's gregoryscott.com. Click on the readings tab to order your reading. And I use astrology, tarot, and numerology in my readings. It literally shows me a blueprint of your soul. I can tell you what your life purpose is, why you've come back, and why you're here. We can have a look at what your vocational aptitudes are, so what you're going to be good at work-wise and how you can maximize your potential in that area and how you can do a job that not only pays you well but that you feel good about, that fulfills you. We can look at um, the kind of character defects that you've got that you want to work through. We can look at what your strengths are and identify those. And we can also predict what's coming up for you in future by using the predictive astrology and the tarot and look at what's coming up for you in your love life, in your career, in your health, in your family life in future by looking at those tools and it gives you a really nice insight into you know what the priorities are, where luck is on your side and where you can put your energy and make the most of it and what areas aren't really supported astrologically and that you can put to the side for now because you're not going to make a lot of progress anyway. So for instance, if Saturn is transiting your sixth house and your biggest desire is to lose 50 pounds, then delay that a little bit because with Saturn in your six, it's going to be harder for you to lose weight. So that's not the ideal time to go on a crash diet. So that's the kind of thing that the information that can be very helpful. So I hope that gives you an idea of the week ahead. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful time. Please remember to subscribe to this YouTube channel if you like my videos and I'll speak to you next week.